Hey, I think my next project needs very little introduction. A full armor Mando build. We're gonna get started on part one today. Let's go. <laughs> How's it going? Anthony Fro here, Crate Sci-Fi. Well, today is very exciting, very daunting. Um, right, the journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. Today is the Mando armor build. Now this is gonna be a big build, so it's, it's not gonna be one video. Um, what I find with these big builds is that if you just look at the whole thing, it's overwhelming. And I think a lot of people don't get started because of that, but I'm just gonna approach it one piece at a time. And there's a lot going on. So I have all these cast armor pieces, which, um, uh, came to me from a young maker, only 19 years old, he's amazing, uh, Nigel uh, from Malaysia actually. And we're gonna talk to him later in the video, talk to him a little bit about his process. But I have all the armor pieces. Um, so, a lot going on. And I have to paint these, treat these, some little damage um, and shipping, but this I'm gonna, you know, shore that up. I think I'm gonna add fiberglass on these pieces. And then the hard part, the hardest part of this whole thing getting together is the soft suit. So I have this suit from Cosplay Sky and what it is is they have a Mandalorian costume. It's about $150, but it's not like all the armor is just like vinyl and plastic, like what you would expect. But this under costume, which to me was the most challenging thing to figure out how to do this under costume, like this is bang on. So we're gonna use this under costume and then probably in my mind, I don't know, we'll see as we do it, the um, the way that the, the cheap armor attaches to this costume, I'll modify um, to our armor, right? So a lot going on. So I think, like I said, I'm just going to approach it just one piece at a time. I can't look at the whole thing. And this is definitely not gonna be um, in one video. This is probably going to be over uh, a couple videos, right? So very <laughs> excited to get started on this. So like I said, got some cleanup to do, some reinforcement. Oh, it's a lot going on, but it's very exciting. And it's the home stretch for the Mandalorian builds. And then uh, can start seriously get to work on making the fan film. Wow. <laughs> All right, so let's just throw that cosplay sky soft costume on the mannequin so we can see what we're working with. It's, it's, I find like the mannequin is important for me because it's just, instead of things in a pile, like to just see it really, really helps. Then we're gonna get started on this armor. And like I said, I don't know, I'm just gonna attack it just a little piece at a time. I'm not gonna overwhelm myself. Um, let's hop on a Zoom call with uh, the amazing maker, Nigel, who um, cast all this armor for me. All right, <laughs> doing the cleanup already. All right, let's talk to Nigel. Hey, hey. all right, so here we are with uh, Nigel Chua. He's he's the guy that made the armor that we're using, the amazing armor. Um, uh, built it from scratch, cast it. Uh, I'm gonna send you to his site, to his Instagram, to his sort of his online portfolio, like really amazing stuff. And the, the only thing that really uh, annoys me about Nigel is you're, you're like, what, 19? Yeah, that's right, I'm 19. <laughs> it's pretty amazing, pretty amazing. So no excuses, people, like, like he's crushing it. I've been making little crafts and things for as long as I can remember, but I only really started taking things seriously maybe about a year ago. And yeah, in that time, uh, I learned more about 3D printing and molding and casting because like a lot of people, I started out with foam, making armor out of foam right, and right, stuff. Right, right, right. Yeah. Punish yeah. props. So head. then I moved on to 3D printing and different kinds of 3D printing, like resin printing. After that, I got into molding and casting, things like that. You know, talking about the awesome Mandalorian armor that you made, which I now have a set of, so that's what I'm going to be yes. using for, for mine, is you, you design it first and 3D print it first. And uh, Nigel said, we'll give you a download link to those files. And then Learning was it the always your intention to print them and then cast them? Or did that evolve as you were doing it? 
that was always the intention from the beginning because this project was just sort of um trying to do as much of it by myself as uh, as i could so from like how they would do it production wise they'd because they need multiple copies and different materials right, depending right, on right. the scene. Yeah, right, so right. they need a mold. So that's what I did from there. So I thought, you know, it'd be fun right, to right. do it like as they would do it. Right, right. And then like for me, you got to pick your battles, right? It's like, so I could download your files, print it out. The prints would take, I don't know, I'd probably be printing for probably like two weeks probably, right? To print yeah. everything. You, you, you got to choose your places where you want to spend your time, I guess. So you're 19, you're creating stuff on this level. Do we do we mention that you're in Malaysia too? Do we mention that? I don't know if no, we, not I, yet. I didn't know if we did. Yeah. You know, lots of times I talk to people and they're like, uh, you know, they, they talk about like, well, how they don't have anybody to play with or like, you know, where do you find mm -hmm. people to work with? And like now I've worked with you in Malaysia. I've worked with people in India, London. I worked with a guy in Seattle, never, ever meeting physically you know what i mean and it's like i saw your work on instagram and i reached out and you responded and then now we're having this conversation and and i'm just i'm just trying to share that with people you know what i mean who feel like maybe you know they're they're sort of inhibited by where they are geographically where that really really doesn't matter anymore you know you just fedex things email things and mm -hmm. um go back and forth and then like at 19 you just figured this out. Like, what do you, you just watch like YouTube videos? How did you get your basic skills? Did you go to art school? Did you? I did not go to art school. In fact, in high school, I failed art. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got a lot of my information from either YouTube or the forums, Facebook right, right. groups. And do you take, you know, if people look at your work, do you take commissions as well? Or does it just depend on the project? It depends on the project and what I'm doing at the it time. What you're doing at the time. Because, yeah, yeah. Right on, Nigel. All right, brother. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Well, all right, here we go. Start with the chest. <laughs> Buckle up. Time to get started. All right, I'm excited about this. So the first thing I got to do is deal with um, the shipping problem. So... This, the, the armor came really good condition, except for this one piece. And uh, this sort of piece of fiberglass, I guess this was to strengthen it a little, that kind of got loose. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna redo the fiberglass. So here I'm just taking a deburring tool and I'm just sort of going around the edges, um, cleaning this up. Again, I'm doing a Mando character, right? I'm using the best car steal from the TV show, but it's it's not gonna be pristine like it is in the show. I'm definitely gonna do a lot of battle damage on this, so I'm not gonna kill myself for cleaning this up, but you still gotta clean it up. You gotta get rid of all the flash, gotta make sure all your edges are, are cleaned up, right? So that it's not just um, like all these ragged edges. And here, you know, I have these two tabs that came off, and you know, I am gonna put fiberglass, but before that, I'm just taking this styrene plastic, and what I'm gonna do is make these little tabs that are gonna just sort of give the support, one, so that it doesn't break and fold again, and then two, it just seems like the best way to sort of to patch these back in there. Now, I've marked them A and B just because um, they're sort of organic tears, right? So I wanna make sure that I match up the tears uh, the best that I can. And here I'm just using super glue. I think if it was only gonna be these patches, I would use epoxy, but on top of this, um, in just a moment, I'm gonna be adding fiberglass. So I thought that was fine. So here, this is the first one. So I'm experimenting with, my first thought with the battle damage was that I was gonna use this old wood burning tool that I have, that I use specifically for this purpose. But with the resin cast, I was feeling like it wasn't giving me what I wanted. So what I'm ending up doing for the whole um, entirety of this project is I'm using a series of files. I have a couple rasp files, um, and then I also have these like small hand saws that I use to kind of give it those like chewed up scratched marks, right? So I'm starting to get that dialed in. So um, I use the Dremel just to sort of hit it, give it some dings, maybe like some bullet hits sort of things or cracks. So here what I'm doing is I'm matching it up because these two pieces lay on top of each other and I'm trying to match up the damage. However, What's gonna happen throughout this video is uh, when I got started here, I had it um, in my mind upside down the way these two pieces go together, which is not a big deal. Um, but um, 
you know, for this first sort of half almost of it, like that's upside down right there. Like it should be the other way around, but I figured that out eventually. <laughs> So now I'm just toothing this up. This is a really smooth, slick surface, and I want to tooth it up before I put the uh, fiberglass. And the fiberglass, for sure, you need a respirator. Like, this stuff is powerful, right? And also, too, like, when you're cutting the fiberglass cloth itself, you don't want to be breathing in those fibers. And then the actual resin itself is powerful. And I'll tell you, when you use a really good respirator like that, it's amazing um, how much it, it, it makes it even easier to work with right you know i've done it before with like dust masks dust masks and it's 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 not a good thing right so here i'm just you know pre-cutting up my sheets um and we're gonna mix up the resin here i think it's like for every ounce it's gonna be like 10 drops of hardener so i do like about a i think it's like eight ounces i'm doing here so it's gonna be 80 drops but this you do want to make sure that you get the ratios right because it's the kind of thing you don't want to have to redo and you don't want this to set too quick or not set at all so basically what i do is you know you paint on uh, a layer then you add the fiberglass the actual fiberglass cloth and then you paint a layer on top of that and you know it's it's a little sort of sticky and you know, but it's not that difficult to, to work with. Once you get that, that coat down and everything sort of lays in place, it's it's pretty easy to work with, right? So now I'm just doing this bottom piece and this chest armor, uh, you know, it's, it's, I don't know, it's the chest, right? It's front and center, so you want this to be solid. Um, so it's worth it to me to take the time to get this um, into shape. Now there's a back piece that you rarely ever see because um, the cape covers it and, um, you know, I want it to be there, but that I'm not putting fiberglass on, right? So there, and this is, I'm doing this at night. So now I'm just going to go to bed, wake up in the morning and get cracking on it. Um, here, uh, I'm just taking a, a an X-Acto knife, a, a, a box cutting blade, and I'm just going to trim these edges as much as I can before I get in with the tools, right? So... With the files and the Dremel tool, I'm gonna to clean up those edges, but now it's fiberglass, it's solid, feels good. And then, you know, you're glad you did that because it's it's you can knock this around and nothing's gonna to happen to it. And here I'm just cleaning up the edges, right? And then I finish it off with a little emery stick, a little sanding board, and it starts to feel like something. And there is something about, you know, when you hold these pieces and it's not flimsy where it's rigid, where it has kind of like a psychological <laughs> impact on you, where it's like, yes, armor. <laughs> and especially like, this is not cosplay, right? I'm gonna be uh, making a film. So this is for actors and actors, you want them to feel, the more real it feels to them, the, the better performance you're gonna get. So now I'm starting to think about starting my painting treatment. So uh, I'm just sanding, this is a 220 grit here. And again, upside down. <laughs> So here I'm going to hit it with a filler sander primer, right? That gives me a nice thick coat that I can sand and uh, sort of fill up any impurities. Now, while that's drying, I'm printing this Death Watch logo that I'm going to put on the shoulder bell, um, and then I'm going to scratch it off. <laughs> but um, I think this is adding to the story of my character, right? So, uh, you know, maybe you can figure that out yourself. So that's the Death Watch logo. I'm gonna, you know, in the TV show, it's the, um, what is it? It's like that um, that horned, like rhinoceros, what's it called again? I don't know, but. <laughs> so here I'm gonna put the Death Watch logo on there and um, I'm getting that prepped for that. And yeah, like these are pretty thick, right? These I, I don't need to bulk up. So here I'm just hitting this with some super glue and I'm gonna lay it down. And I just wanna get, because it's a, like an organic weird shape, once I get the the one, I guess, you know, that's a W maybe. Once I get that tacked down, now I can hit it with the heat gun. Be careful, you don't wanna melt it, you don't wanna burn your finger, but you know, massage that in there. And now I'm just uh, hitting it with some super glue. And again, you know, not worrying about being um, precise and pristine because like I said, everything's gonna get gouged up. 
So here I'm just sanding it down, making it blend. And yeah, that looks cool. And I guess, you know, if you just wanted to build like a Death Watch costume, you could just leave it at that, right? But my story is maybe the guy's ex Death Watch, right? So he kind of scrapes that off, similar to like, you know, in the movie uh, Gladiator with Russell Crowe when he takes a rock and scrapes off his tattoo, kind of going for that kind of vibe. So here I have the Dremel. Uh, I'm starting to dial in my weathering technique. What's interesting too is, you know, I've made so many of these pieces now, but this is the first one you're seeing here, right? So you you sort of start to see what works and then, you know, I carry that on to the rest of the pieces. So here, you know, did all that work, but I really want it to be um, almost like an Easter egg, right? I would like for most people to not even notice that. And then the people who do notice it, right, it makes it special. So now we're going to hit that with the primer, same as we did with the chest armor. It's out in my yard drying. It's not so summery out anymore, but still warm. So here what I did is I just sprayed just a few areas with red. And then what I'm going to do now is take toothpaste, and I'm just going to put little dips and dabs of toothpaste over this red paint, and that's going to give it a chipped look, right? So again, so the story of my character is maybe, you know, originally when he was young, he was this red, you know, clean, young, hopeful armor. And then now by the time we meet him, it's been painted over several times. It's just black and dirty and beat up. So I don't want to go heavy with these red chips. I just want them to be subtle. And then here's my favorite matte black paint that I've been painting a lot with lately. This is, um, I get it from the auto store. It's a Rust-Oleum. It's meant to paint rims, but it's flat black and it's thick. So I really like it. So here's the costume while well, that's drying. So this is the costume that I purchased to get these juicy parts, right? So this vest is a very valuable thing that I don't have to build, but it has this very sad um, vinyl sort of replica of the Mando armor. But that gives me an idea where I'm going to place my stuff, right? So now having this vest, you know, if any of you have built costumes, there's certain parts that are just... They're tough, right? So having this is huge, right? So there's sort of that waste, almost like cummerbund. And what I'm gonna do is because it's a polyester blend, I have this poly dye. So I'm gonna dye all that stuff black, right? So it further removes it from that costume, makes it original. And it also just gives us those really cool pieces that are well-made and it's gonna just make our costume look better. So here I just got cold water. I let that sit overnight, now I'm just rinsing it cold and now I'm drying it in the back. And yeah, you see, like that's that's cool, right? Now it's part of our Mandalorian costume, but it's the real sort of shapes. And here, this is just the cape. So what I've been doing all week, it's still out there now, is basically I just throw the cape, I, I got it wet, threw it on the ground, and I just been walking over it for about three weeks now. Give it an organic weathering. So here I'm taking uh, like a Scotch-Brite, and I'm scraping off, I got hot water, and I'm just scraping off all that toothpaste, right? And it comes right off. And you, you definitely want to make sure that this paint has had a while to dry, right? Like, I usually let this dry for 24 hours. Then that way you can really get in there and sort of scrub off that toothpaste and not have to worry about lifting off the other paint, right? And then those chips start to pop. I like, I like because I have the black, I have these little red flecks. I think that's... You know, that's really going to look good. And that's going to get damped down when we weather it anyway, but it's just building the layers. So now I'm going to do a dry silver brush over everything, right? So that it's not just like a jet black sort of um, armor. Now it looks more like a dirty old beat up silver armor, right? So now we have the red chips. We have the dry brush, right? I'm going to continue that over to, to the shoulders, to the spalders shoulder bells, whatever you want to call them. And again, like each one of these steps looks like too much, but everything's going to get muted and patted down and weathered, right? So now I'm just going to put a clear coat over that because like I've said before, we don't want to make mud. We're building layers, right? We're not mixing them. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call out a couple of the details. I'm going to call out these sort of raised areas on the shoulders and then also on the chest there's, you know, like that diamond. So these I'm going to mask off and I'm going to paint them with a gloss black so that I can hit them with a, a graphite treatment, right? So here, 
uh, I, again, you know, I talk about this a lot is, is like, you know, I'm, that's like one eighth of the whole thing, maybe like one tenth, but you have to mask off the whole thing because if you just get a little overspray where you don't want it, it's just, it's just not fun. Right? So there's everything masked. And now I'm just going to hit it with a gloss black. That's going to be my base for, um, for putting on the graphite, right? So there that is drying. Okay, so now definitely with the graphite, it's powder, it's a dust, you know, it's like pencil lead put on the respirator and then boom, <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> Love this process. Thanks, Bill Duran and Core Geek. Uh, so yeah, and that just gives it, you know, it's all these little subtle things that it's the combination of all these things. It's not like one thing. I think too often people lean into like, Oh, I'm going to make it look chewed up. And then that's it. It's like, you have to have layer upon layer. So now we have the paint chips. We have the dry brush. We now have the graphite. I have still yet to weather it with paint and with powder. Right? So it's just, you know, probably ends up being seven layers. So now the weathering. So here I have the water-based oil paints. I have black burnt umber and like a, uh, uh, sort of like a dark brown, right? So with the black, I do a sludge wash, which is just wash over the whole thing, right? And already that starts to mute all that dry brushing. And I like to, to pat it off because then that just leaves some sort of unevenness, which is what you want. Then I take the browns, the burnt umbers, and I just like do a stabby stabby. <laughs> just sort of like little like hits here and there. And, you know, I, I, there is no, like, specific technique to this, right? It's just more of, like, if you overthink it, it'll look weird. You could do one hit in the wrong place, but that's fine. You just rub it off, and it'll look weird, but then, you know, a week later, you won't even notice it. And then that almost, in a weird way, makes it real, right? So now that's starting to have some life. So now I'm repeating the same technique on the shoulders, but also now what I do is I add, I have this green metallic, right? It's not based in anything in the world, nothing organic, it's just green metallic paint. But what I do is I put little random bits and bobs of it here and there, and then I pat almost all of it off. And it leaves this, I don't even know what to call it. It's like this sort of haze of green and it's like, I don't, is that like mold? Is it rust? Is it, I don't know, but it's not predominant, but it's just there. And it just adds, I think anything that sort of breaks it up makes it more mysterious, right? So here I'm gonna hit all this now with clear again, right? Cause we're on like our fourth or fifth layer of stuff and we don't want it to get messed up. And now I'm gonna do the powders. Now the powders, Typically, I do one or the other. I, I think I said before when I was building the weapons, the powders I'm doing on this build because I know I'm going to be shooting in the desert. So I want everything to have sort of like a dusty look, right? So maybe if I was shooting like in a cold climate, I'd want it to have like a wet look. But yeah, and then now I'm really just also using this, uh, the brown powders to really get into the crevices and really sell sort of all of my, my, my scars, right? My battle damage. And now I'm going over it with sort of like a black charcoal color. And you know, you rub it off, brush it off. And then here's my blue. The blue to me is kind of like the chrome green, right? It's like, I don't have any reason for where I put any of it. I just know that that blue, that little bit of blue catches your eye and it really and there. Oh, finally I put it in the right orientation, <laughs> right? So now it's starting to, starting to come together. And then as the last little afterthought is I just take a little tiny bit of rub and buff and just bring back some high points, just little here and there. And again, broken record, but it's like, I don't overthink it. It's just, you know, just little spots, right? So now we got to figure out how to mount this onto um, the vest, right? And I mean, if the best way to do it is Velcro. I, um, I used to like avoid Velcro, but it's like, you, you can't avoid it and it, it works. I used to be afraid, especially, you know, cosplay, it, it doesn't matter. But like if you're performing and stuff goes flying off with Velcro, 
it's a problem, but I've actually never had that happen. So knock on wood, <laughs> Velcro. But we before we do that, so I have to attach these two pieces together and I don't want to make a hard connection, right? So what I'm doing here is I just have these uh, straps. They're like belt straps. And I'm just hot gluing the two pieces together rather than like making them uh, a hard connection or even more complicated, I think, would to make to attach them to the vest as two separate pieces, I still, you know, so I'm trying to get the best of both worlds here, right? So I have a flexible bond between these two pieces, but now they're one piece. And what I'm gonna do, and, and I'm gonna do this throughout, is the back I'm going to coat or sort of in, in tomb in <laughs> like two millimeter foam. And for me, that does a couple of things. It, it, it shores everything up and it just makes it cleaner. And again, like I said, this is not cosplay, this is for an actor. So I want an actor to look at something and just feel good about it, right? And be like, oh, you know, they're excited to be putting this on rather than if it was just all like, you know, when you flip it over, it's all different colors and you see all the different, you know, sort of you see all the work, right? So here you just let the barred cement, you let that dry for about five or 10 minutes till it's tacky and then you put everything together, right? And so to me, the the best thing about this, like I said, is it, is it makes it, uh, it completes the piece, right? It makes it more solid, but also just aesthetically, there's just something about having the clean piece, right? So here I'm just getting rid of um, all the excess. I'll, I'll trim it uh, in a more cleaner way once it dries. But there you see, right? It's like, it's all clean, nice uniform piece. So now on the inside of the shoulders, I want to put some foam. Now, all of the, the armor so far, I put a foam backing on it. And that foam backing is, like I said, it's to keep everything together and to keep it clean and tidy. Here, the shoulders, you might actually see under there, right? So this, I'm actually gonna do something a little more stylized. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking tape to make a pattern. Right, and this is a quick and easy way to make a pattern. You cover whatever the area is that you wanna duplicate and tape, and you cut that out, and here I flattened it out, and I just cut like, just sort of one dart down the middle there so that I can get the bend, and I'm just double testing this. So now I have a pattern so I can cut a piece of foam that's gonna fit nice and snugly in that shoulder, right? And then this will make more sense once you see the foam that I chose, right? So I have this diamond powder foam. So this way, if you see underneath that shoulder, it's not gonna look like a prop or a costume piece. It's gonna look like some kind of finished something, right? So um, it's all about the details. So here I'm cutting out the foam because I want that diamond pattern to be on the inside quilted, almost like, you know, like the, the quilted lining of a jacket or something, right? And it's like you, you might catch sight of this, probably not, but if you do, you just won't think about it, but subconsciously you'll, you'll think like, oh, this shoulder is a real piece of armor, as opposed to like if you saw in there and it was like you saw globs of hot glue and like pieces of fiberglass, if that makes sense. Speaking of hot glue. <laughs> so now I'm gonna put this uh, in with hot glue, right? Because this doesn't need barred cement. It's just, you know, I'm gonna hot glue it and then never think about it again and then here you know still got to do some fine trimming like you know i made that pattern but things shift and i'm just trimming it just a little bit so i can get a snugger fit and then i'm gonna go over it with a, a rotary tool a tool later but for now just making it sort of get in there a lot of hot glue don't burn your fingers <laughs> I have so many hot glue scars on my fingers. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the rotary tool, the Dremel. We're just gonna clean up these edges, right? So I just wanna give it a, a nice transition. And also too, like I said, you know, I cut it from that pattern. It wasn't like a perfect fit, but now we're gonna massage it and make it a perfect fit. So now we hit it with the heat gun. What the heat gun does is it cleans up all those little fuzzies and it also, you know, seals the foam. So now we have those bells and then, oh, underneath, look at that. Yeah, that's cool. Very happy with that. It's like a little thing, but I'm glad I did it. So now here's the cheap sort of, I don't know, plastic shoulders from the costume. So I'm using these as a template to figure out where to put the Velcro 
on my shoulders so I can attach it to the Velcro that's already built in to the costume shirt, um, which earlier, you know, we put on the mannequin. So here I'm just dremeling that down so I have uh, a good surface to attach to. And I have the E6000 glue, which is what I like when I'm gluing fabrics and rubbers together. And then there I'm just putting some pins in there just to let it sit overnight so it doesn't move around. And now um, I need to start with uh, the Velcro. How am I gonna attach this armor to that chest vest and Velcro, right? So I'm cutting off the strips of Velcro. Now these um, are self-adhesive, so I'm, I'm going to stick these onto the foam, but for the fabric, you know, the soft one, I'm gonna to have to sew that. So what I'm doing here is I'm just covering up most of the Velcro so I don't have like a, a really sort of strong Velcro connection. I want it to be just barely on there because what I'm doing here is I'm sort of uh, mapping out my positions and um, I want it to be able to fit perfectly. So this way, by covering up the Velcro and just putting just the ends of the Velcro, I know that once I um, pat this down in the right place, it's not gonna be difficult to, to remove and then lose sort of my spot. <laughs> that makes sense? I don't know, I'm just rambling, but you're gonna see what I mean in a second, right? So now there is the vest in the right spot. And what I'm gonna do now is when I remove it, it's still gonna stay attached because it's not a strong Velcro connection because I put that tape there to dampen the Velcro, right? So there is my pattern. And then now, you know, that's stuck on there with the double-sided adhesive, but now I can, I'm gonna go ahead and sew it, right? So once I sew that, then I'll have the good connection. So here I am at the sewing machine, just to sew, <laughs> show you I can sew, but it, sewing is something I definitely would never do a tutorial on. I buy, you know, by the skin of my teeth. But, you know, there it is, and yeah, it worked. And then now let's take a look at some beauty shots. And there it is, right? Phase one, the shoulders and the chest. And like I said, it really helps to have this mannequin because now I can look at that, be inspired to continue, and then know like, okay, everything looks like it's fitting right, right? So very cool, very happy with that. Yeah, right? We're a third of the way there. <laughs> Looking good. <laughs> starting to look like something and seriously i think one of the best purchases i made early on before i started was the mannequin this just really helps to keep things in order like i said if you think of the whole thing it's overwhelming but piece by piece bit by bit and being able to sort of stick it on here and be like okay done check it off the list and then it kind of inspires me to do the next piece and kind of helps me with the fit up so very very happy with this <laughs> Like I said, it's a lot of work, so I'm going to do this in multiple parts. Um, and um, I'm I'm definitely going to be making a Star Wars uh, fan film. And it, obviously, it's going to be featuring this Mandalorian character. Um, very excited about this. I know it's Star Wars heavy, but just to remind you, this has been my lockdown project, right? So I've sort of picked something and I leaned into it. And, you know, this has been helping me sort of to see a way forward and hopefully you're enjoying this and it kind of will get all the star wars out of my system and then in the future we'll get back to doing other things but for now this is the way well as always i hope you found this video useful please like share subscribe leave a comment love to read the comments be sure to check out the merch shop we got the hats we got t-shirts buying those really helps the channel and remember i'm just here to help make sci-fi <laughs>